YouTube family. Now make no mistake, I am a massive Dragon Ball Z fan. I love Dragon Ball Z with my heart and soul. There aren't many things that rival Dragon Ball Z in terms of a series, a plot that develops its characters, its setting, and its overall story and built on it over a period of time and just continues to add different elements and change as the story progresses. As a series, there aren't very many things that rival Dragon Ball Z. I mean, the only thing I can think of that comes even close is Kingdom Hearts. If Square Enix ever gets around to actually making that shit a series and gets their shit together. But other than that, I don't think anything even comes close as far as a series. Now, I mean, there are things like Remember the Titans, which is pretty much the greatest thing that I've ever seen. I love that movie so much, but it's not a series. It's just a movie, so I don't really compare it to Dragon Ball Z. So, Dragon Ball Z is almost, almost, excuse me, unrivaled in my mind. But there comes a time that you have to look at something you love, whether it be poetry, music, a novel, a short story, a, a movie, or a TV show, and you have to just look at it for what it is not what you love about it you have to look at it for its imperfections and its flaws and just evaluate it for what it is at its core at its root and with that being said i have to say that that after all these years i i love dragon ball z but fuck fuck akira toriyama because i don't feel like he loves and respects what he creates and i feel like like if you love and respect what you create then there is continuity there is consistency and when you create something you want it to make sense you don't want to have to destroy things that you've said before in order to build on what you want to say now and that is ultimately what it comes down to because there are so many inconsistencies there are so many plot holes all throughout Dragon Ball Z because I feel like Akira Toriyama doesn't do that it's almost as if he doesn't think of his creation as a whole and don't get me wrong he's done some great 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 things with this series but when you look at something like the Boo Saga everything after Boo waking up out of that cocoon doesn't make sense all of it that entire saga makes no sense. And to me, it just feels like if you really love and care about something, you cannot have so many inconsistencies all throughout what you love, if you're the creator of it. And that's just how I feel. At the end of the day, that's just how I feel. I mean, obviously, there may be a few inconsistencies here and there when you have 10 seasons worth of of. 25 minute TV shows I get it or you have pages upon pages upon pages uh, and chapters and books and books upon a particular thing I get it but some of them are just ridiculous I was very very excited for Dragon Ball Z to come back we've all wanted Dragon Ball Z for over a dozen years I won't say that Dragon Ball Z ended on a cliffhanger but it ended in a way where you thought you know what these dudes could actually um, do a whole lot more you know as Saiyans who barely barely age you knew you know what these dudes can live another 50 years or so and I want to know what's gonna happen to them in those 50 years so that's why we were always hoping bring Dragon Ball Z back and when Battle of Gods came out I didn't really take it seriously as the beginning of Dragon Ball Z returning I, I just kind of thought of it as oh he's dropping a movie um, just to kind of explain a, a period of time. It is what it is. Whatever. But then, all of a sudden I start hearing about Resurrection of F about to come out. And then all of a sudden, Dragon Ball Super. And for a moment I, re I, I realized, wow, Dragon Ball Z is back. And I was excited. And that's part of the reason why I'm so disappointed is because I was, we waited so long and we're finally here. We're here in an era where Dragon Ball Z is active again. And that's why I was so disappointed after watching Resurrection of F because I feel like I feel like he didn't bring us back to Dragon Ball Z. He didn't bring Dragon Ball Z back to us actually because because he loves his creation or because we've really really wanted it because we've really really we don't want it anymore now than we did 10 years ago. 
So if that was the case, he would have done it 10 years ago. But now I see, and it makes me feel like he's an opportunist. He's an uh, opportunity to expand his legacy and make some more money. Because at the end of the day, if he was doing it for us, I feel like he would have done it years ago. Because we don't want Dragon Ball Z more now than we did before. We've always wanted Dragon Ball Z just as much. And the fact that there's still the same inconsistencies and the same disregard for things that he's put into this into this universe that we call Dragon Ball Z, it makes me feel like he really doesn't care about it, doesn't respect it. So let's talk about why I say that. There's so many of these type of things all throughout the series, but I'm just going to talk about these recent ones because I felt like he would be putting more effort into not doing things like this as Dragon Ball Z goes forward. The whole reason why this show exists, I mean this movie exists, is because Frieza's henchmen were able to come to Earth, use the Dragon Balls to wish Frieza back. But let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about the last time Frieza was a legitimate threat. So let's not talk about when he came to Earth, but when Goku was fighting him on Nemec, because I don't consider Frieza a legitimate threat when he came to Earth. So, last time he was a legitimate threat, we were on, we were on Nemec. And dialogue between King Kai and Kami was this. Uh, a person can only be revived if they did not die of natural causes and had died within a year's time. Now, that already didn't make sense because they revived Goku the very first time, like well after a year. But they're doing the exact same thing with Frieza. But you know what? I found a loophole for that because I love Dragon Ball Z and I just decided that you know what this is a new Shinron this Shinron has more powers he can bring people back to life more than once so you can probably bring someone back who died 50 years ago who cares but here's the part that really bugged me all of a sudden trying to introduce power levels again Akira Toriyama when you dropped it like right after the Ginyu situation that really messed everything up because you're gonna say this um, <laughs> Frieza says, I can actually reach a power level of 1.3 million. Now, you he likes to use dialogue to develop the story. But now you can't just throw other dialogue out the window that developed the story. Because remember when Frieza first transformed to, into the, the I, I like to call it the Devil Frieza, the one that looks like it should have been the final form. He has the longest horns, I believe he's the tallest and the buffest at that point. He just looks like a more powerful character. Well, when he first reaches that form, he tells Vegeta, hey Vegeta, did you know that my power level is over 1 million in this form? He then proceeds to transform again. He then proceeds to transform again, then power up to full power, then transform. And you mean to tell me that his power level only increased by 300,000 in that time frame? No, that doesn't make any sense at all. At all. And stuff like that is furiating because it's not particularly necessary. But now all of like we we don't care about Frieza's power level being 1.3 million. But since you put that in there, now all of a sudden we have to debate on whether he was saying what he, he was saying correctly when he said that his power level in his second form was over 1 million or if he's just throwing out bullshit saying it's going to be 1.3 million now see i don't like to have to pick and choose what i'm going to assume is right and that's th that's what bugs me the most and a lot of this stuff is just little things but why don't you care enough about your series to not let little stupid shit just seep through people like to say oh it's dubbing errors oh it's um uh translation errors but you know what if i have something and it needs to be translated into other languages i'm gonna make sure that it translates in a way where my series still makes sense i feel like at the end of the day it still goes back to Kira Toriyama. let's talk about the very last thing last thing that just kind of pissed me off frieza is told by that henchman bitch that uh, Goku defeated Majin Buu while he was dead. And, and, and Frieza is surprised at this, right? But why is Frieza surprised at this? Frieza watched Goku kill Majin Buu. He watched him do it on a big 4, 4K screen TV. So, 
Where? Like, you don't care enough to even even think that you had a scene where, or there was a scene where 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 Frieza was clearly watching Goku fight Majin Buu. Like, you don't care enough. I mean, or were you, or were you just not even a part of the Dragon Ball Z series in America? Like, I don't. That type of stuff is what really, really bugs me. It makes me think that you just don't care about what you're doing. He was there to watch Frieza. I mean, he was there to watch Boo get destroyed. Now, all of a sudden, he's surprised at it. And it's not just this movie. This type of stuff is all throughout Dragon Ball Z. And I thought by now he would care enough to not continue that streak of just inconsistencies. But he did. But am I just tripping? Should I just be more appreciative that Dragon Ball Z is back? I don't know. But all I know is I was disappointed to see just random little shit like that just go by. Let me know what you